Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Age Better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. I have an extraordinary guest with me today, and I'm really excited for you all to hear his story and also how we met. Um, he had a horrific accident, which he will tell you all about very soon. But more importantly, what really struck me most about him when I met him, uh, which I'll tell you about in a second, is how he has this a sense of perseverance and resilience and mission and nothing seems to stop Tyrone Fulgham. So Tyrone, welcome to Age Better. I'm really excited to have you. So I think that we really need to start off with, okay, how the heck did you and I even meet to have this conversation? Because we have met. And I'm just going to start by saying that I uh, go back, a lot of people who listen to me and for a number of years, they know I go back and forth between New York City and Virginia. And so I was, and this was like, I want to say late 2022. And I was on a flight from LaGuardia to Virginia Beach, Norfolk Airport. And, um, and I had the great pleasure of sitting next to you, <laughs> Tyrone. And so, uh, you know, I always like to at some point talk to the person next to me if I feel like that person's kind of open to and not everybody always is. Right. And uh, we got to talking. And that's when you told me your story, which we will get to in a minute. But then something else also came up. After you told me your story, I then asked you, well, I, I hear that you were living in Virginia Beach at one point, not that long ago. What were you doing there? And then you told me where you worked. You told me that you worked at an assisted, one of the best, actually, assisted living facilities in Virginia Beach. And as it turned out, that's where my mother was living. Yes. <laughs> and not only did you remember her, but she was, as you said, one of your favorites. So, because she really loved to play games and she was just like a really big kid. And I miss her so much. She did pass away in 2021, yes. which made you incredibly sad. Do you remember this day and our I discussion? Do I do remember. She, listen, your, your mom was a smart, um, witty and no nonsense. Yeah, uh, just uh, that was just it was one of those things that it was meant to be that we meet and, and sure enough, we did. But now I would like to get to your story. All right. So Tyrone, please tell us. I already know your story. It's incredible. Tell us about the event of that day. What happened? Well, uh, it was uh, like any other day for me. I, I was out running. I was training um, to to do a qualifier for the Boston Marathon because that was always my my dream. Uh, I was running on a road in Auburn doing my regular eight mile route and just before I was going to turn around I crested a hill and in a split second a motorcycle came over the hill and slid into me uh, when it did and, uh, and there I was on the ground. <laughs> uh, and the driver of the motorcycle, what did he do? Not much. He mm -hmm. he just kind of stood there. Uh, you know, I was on the ground. You know, you know, I had the capacity to say, "Hey, call nine one one, call nine one one," and he did nothing. Uh, fortunate for me, I had it had accident happened near a golf course, and some golfers nearby saw what happened. They came to me and said, "Hey, we call nine one one. What can we do?" I said, "I need a tourniquet." I said, uh, amazing that you had the wherewithal, given the pain you must have been in, you must have been in shock, your body must have been in shock, and you still had the wherewithal to kind of give instructions to people on how to maybe help save your life. Incredible. I, w I was definitely in shock because I didn't feel the pain. But like you said, I was alert enough to realize that I had unbelievable. To be done. And but the motorcyclist still just stood there and did absolutely nothing to help you. Now, that's a story in and of itself that was really covered in great detail several times in uh, primarily in the state of Maine, which is where this happened, because we did say that you were working in, and living in Virginia Beach, but then you went back to Maine. Why did you return to Maine? Tell us that part of your story at, from from Virginia Beach. Well, um, my brother's uh, wife, Deb is her name, um, had been diagnosed with, with cancer. Uh, for a short time, was in remission, but it came back and it was terminal. And Deb 
uh, before she died, talked to me and said, listen, I need you to come and stay with Stan. Uh, my brother has uh, bilateral epilepsy and he really hasn't taken care of any of the household things. And she said, I, I really would like you to come back and, and stay with him. I'd feel so much better. And, you know, yeah. and, so, and so that's what so I did. So you gave up your life in Virginia Beach right before the pandemic, correct? Correct. And, I, and like I said, I love living in Virginia Beach. You, you know, mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you went back to take care of family, take care of your brother. So you, you did mention that you, in this horrific accident, you did lose a leg. You, you lost your right leg. That's correct. And what and multiple surgeries and, and what happened what were you thinking in the, the weeks that you were experiencing all of these surgeries and uh, the realization that you had lost your leg what what were you thinking what what those emotions first, did the, you have those first couple of weeks were uh were uh horrendous um waking up in the middle of the night uh nightmares because you you, re you relive it you know and you crashing into you, oh. you wake up in pain uh, like I said, I, I had never felt anything like, uh, just the emotions, you know, the despair, uh, the suffering, uh, laying in a hospital bed for weeks is not fun. Um, countless infections, uh, the pain, I thought I could tolerate pain and this was some of the worst pain I ever felt in my life. And so mentally it really, really grinds on you and you, sometimes you wonder, you know, uh, you know. And yeah, grabbed, for the first few, and then at some point you, what what happened that you kind of transitioned into a more positive state of mind? I probably number one, you realize that hey, I'm not going to die. I made it through. Here I am. What is my mission? Can you tell exactly, us about that? Yeah, that's exactly right. I said, hey, if I'm going to live, and I had I had lost so many people already. And so that factored into, I, I lost an older brother. I lost my oldest daughter um, and then my sister-in-law, you know? And so that factored in and I said, listen, I'm here. What right do I have to complain? And that right then and there, I made a plan. You know, I'm going to get up, get up back on my feet. I had so no at that point then you did get a prosthetic leg and yeah. tell us about that. So, you, and then you started coming up with all of these goals to get back out there and compete again. Yes, tell us about that. Well, the first time you get a prosthetic leg, for anybody who has gotten one, it feels like you're a, a newborn, uh, not a newborn baby, but a, a year old trying to walk again. Mm -hmm. Because it's just like that. You have to learn everything over again. It's like you're standing on stilts. And so the process of that was very, very grueling. And uh, it took time. But the blessing of that is once you're standing again, you feel renewed. And uh, and once I was standing again, I was talking about, hey, let's uh, let's get let's get a running blade. What uh, is a run? If I can ask, what is a running blade? Is that is that something that is used that's separate from the prosthetic leg to, specifically for running? Yes, it's a separate attachment. What you do is you unscrew your your leg and you then you attach um, for running. It's um if anybody okay. like, like what we've seen uh, people who have running marathons, yeah. for example, or other races. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Continue. incredible. Yeah, incredible. Like I said, I had, I had never I, I seen it, but I had never experienced it, you right. know, and, and, and they make it look easy. And it's not. It is one of the most challenging things you'll ever do, but it's, it's so inspiring and, and so and, and invigorates you. Now, unfortunately for me, um, I was unable and I said I attempted to run, but because of my li the, the damage in my limb and the damage in my ankle, which was shattered, my left ankle, my leg that survived. My ankle was shattered. I had yeah, so let, let's stop else. right there for a minute because when I met you, I believe it had been a year or less than a year uh, since that incident happened. And in fact, you were traveling from Maine that day, from Maine, and you had to go to New York City to LaGuardia Airport to get to Norfolk Airport, which is where we were going. And that's how we had this chance meeting. And at that time, you told me that your goal was to run in the Boston Marathon. So you had not yet kind of realized, I think, at that point that you weren't going to be able to realize that dream, right? That is correct. 
That is mm-hmm. great. So even like uh, physical therapy and uh, resting the ankle and or rebuilding it again, none of that was really going to work in the end. Is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. Because it's stru- structurally, the ankle is not what it was. You know, it was put back together with uh, screws and plates, which were staying there, but they but it, they ended up getting infected, so they had to take them out because um, suffering osteomyelitis, which is a, which can which can recur, in either my limb or my ankle. Yeah, and so, um, and it, it, like I said, it's not like a person normal sculpted together. It, I mean, yeah, I can stand like on you it. said, it was yeah. it was literally shattered. Yes, and then shattered. put back together again. I mean, but I mean, how did you feel? Because that was your your dream, the Boston Marathon, to run it at that time. How did you feel when you finally realized this is not going to happen? I mean then you went on to another dream, which we'll get to, but this is not going to happen. How did you feel? I was devastated. Running to me is like breathing. That's, that's what running is to me. That's how I felt. If I had any problems, any issues, I would run, you know, that, and that, that would take care of it. Yeah. And, and to not be able to run to, you know, I, I, I would avoid seeing races. I, I, I used to watch the, uh, Boston Marathon, and for the longest time, I would avoid watching it because... And I have to know, before this accident, had you ever run a marathon? No, I ran a half marathon. Mm-hmm. I, uh, it's a great half marathon. It's up here, up here in Maine. Uh, it actually, I don't know if you've ever been to, been to Maine before. I have. But, uh, yeah, so Acadia uh, National Park uh, has what they call a um, carriage trail that one of the former presidents had designed. And part of the marathon runs on that cat carriage trail. It's a beautiful run, um, and that was my half marathon, uh, and I and I felt great. Um, and uh, yeah, I was in and, and boy, you life. sure picked a big one. The Boston Marathon. You have to be really good to get in, as we yeah. know, and that's yeah. why Boston, you were trying to qualify. But, Boston but, has always been always been the goal. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so you you do have a new goal now, though. I mean, correct. the Boston Marathon is still a goal. Tell us about that. Well, um, like I said, when I found out I, I couldn't run, I was looking for other ways to, that I could compete. Right. And somebody suggested, hey, why don't you try a hand cycle? And I had heard of a hand cycle before, but I, you know, I, I remember a kid when I was growing up, he had a hand cycle, but it was a recreational type one. And, and he said they make competitive ones. So I looked it up. And I saw what they looked like. I said, hey, I'm going to try to get one of these. Little did I know that a hand cycle, that I, a competitive hand cycle cost $8,000. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Um, I looked up certain charities and grants in the uh, Asian, and I applied for a grant. Now, I, I you know, I, you know, I, I went through all the criteria. Um, I wrote them a letter stating to them what it would mean to me if they would grant me, uh, you know, the money to, to get this hand cycle. Uh, and I, and like I said, I, I told them my story. I told them how much running meant to me. And I told them that my goal was Boston. And, uh, the day that, uh, that email came and said, we have, we have, uh, you know, accepted your request. I, I mean, I, 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 Oh, I'm so happy for you. So when did this happen? When did you get that email knowing that you were, that this new goal of yours was actually possibly going to become a reality. When did this happen? I believe, yeah, 2020, yeah, March of 2023. Yeah. Because, it, yeah, the process is, yeah, I got it in March 2023. And then I was able to, um, you know, go to the go to the site, uh, Top End Sports, where they custom make, make the hand cycle. They custom you. to your size yeah. and everything yes. else. And yes. wow, of course, it has to be. It has to be. So do you, you currently have it? I mean, you have yes, it? Yes, I do. I have okay. it, yes. So you, have you started training? Yes. Funny thing is now, and my, and my, my brother thought I was crazy. Uh, when I first got it, now it takes six to eight weeks to, 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 to put it together because it's custom made. Oh, um, uh-huh. And so when I got it, I, got, I think I got it in late June. There's a race here, a very famous race, uh, John Bonnet Samuelson, who was a, who I've met before and is, is a, fantastic run a marathoner absolutely um, host the beast of beacon 10k mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. I beach only to had, beacon and that's in maine yeah, right that is correct that is mm-hmm. correct so i only had like six weeks to prepare okay 
And so I said, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try. My brother goes, you're crazy. And you know, I said, never tell, never tell me I can't do anything. <laughs> and so, you know, like I said, I got in the hands. I didn't know the exact, uh, the, at the end of the race. So uh, what is your goal now for uh, doing the hand cycle uh, competition in the Boston Marathon? What is your goal? Like, when do you want to do it? Uh, I, wanna, I know it's happening uh, actually in April of this year. So it's every yeah. April. So next yeah. April or April yeah. 2026, what, what are you thinking of? I'm shooting for 2025. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, um, there are, the problem with it, with Maine is there are not a lot of races that, you know, uh, have hand cycles in them. Um, so I'm in the process of trying to purchase a, a used van so I can have somebody store, to store the hand cycle in and travel to races. So what I'm doing now is like I'm traveling to races to get some experience and then I'm trying to find a qualifier because you have to have so Got it. Yeah. before the end of the year. Okay. So you yes. have time. So what kind of things are you doing now? Are you working with a trainer? Did you create your own training program? Did you go online and find, find something? What, what are you doing to get ready for other races as well? As you just said, you want to do other races, but specifically for the Boston marathon. Well, I did some research online. I also go to the gym, work out my upper body. I have a program that works out my upper body. Um, there's also a simulated cycling machine at the gym that I put in miles on that as well. And I have a training partner. I have a young man named Jeremy who uh, was, was um, disabled at a young age. He's been, he's been riding in a hand cycle for years. And so uh, we... T oh, that's amazing. Has he ever participated in the, the Boston Marathon or another marathon with the hand cycle? No, he is not, and because of me, he wants to do that. So we're mm. we're kind of helping each other. Oh, which that's is, wonderful. Which is a great thing. That's really. Speaking of help, how did your family and friends in Maine? How did they help you during this really, you know, challenging time in your life? Really challenging, life changing time in your life. How have they been and supportive? Everybody rallied to me um, when I was in the hospital. Anything I needed. Um, they were there. My my son and my daughter made a schedule mm -hmm. uh, and a book to, and so, so people could visit. Um, uh, donated things. Um, my uh, what do you call it? my HR coordinator was there the second second day I was in the hospital to make sure I got my short term disability. I mean, that's everybody. E everybody even my was there. Yeah, even my ex wife was there to help me on this journey. It's, it's just amazing. Now, and I've seen that in uh, some of the uh, news, the local news television interviews with you. I've seen some of your friends, you know, being interviewed about you and how you just never give up. I mean, you, you just do not, Tyrone, you just don't give up. And I'm going to actually have links to some of those in the show notes so people can, can see you in action. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Doing even the hand cycle because there was yes. an art, you know, a, a story about the uh, the beach to beacon 10k race that you just uh, referenced too, but you know, tell us about the uh, event that is held every year. And I know your sister has a lot to do with kind of pulling that together because I've been in touch with her since I met you. Um, and tell us about this event. It's, it's called Unbreakable. It's a benefit to uh, assist me. Uh, with my medical needs, aesthetics. I have what they call a C, um, the letter C, not not the actual C, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the cost of this leg is fifty thousand dollars. Now, insurance, strange reason, will only pay for one of these legs in in your lifetime. And my yeah, yeah, yeah. My sister heard that and they said, "Well, it's got to be something we, we we can do." And so she came up with the idea of this benefit. So we teamed up with uh, Funny for Funds. Um, which I had never heard of before, but I watched their instructional video and um, they, they have uh, comics, you know, professional comics that come and put on a show. You um, have auction items, uh, music, concessions, and it, and it comes together to for a great, great show. Um, and my sister's been, it's the third year we're doing it. Yep. My sister and, and, and her staff do a, an amazing job. Lo and behold, guess what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she did amazing. it. Amazing. So. With, That's with amazing. The Fulgham family, never say never. <laughs> never say never to the whole Fulgham family. Never. And so That's this right. is something that has become an annual event, as you said, because we're going to be going into the third one, right? In a couple of yes. weeks. 
right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, there will be a link about uh, that as well in the show notes. So uh, for anyone who's interested in learning more about that, um, and I hope that you all do check that out. Um, so you do have your sights set on the Boston Marathon. What, and it's really just a, you know, it's just, um, you've just shown such remarkable resilience and determination and a sense of mission that is really motivational, certainly for me. And I know it's for everyone who's listening in right now. But what are some of the goals you have? Well, like my first, like I said, one of my first goals is to get that van because I I need that van. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you do. So I'm hoping and praying, you know, uh, obviously financially I can't there, but I'm hoping and praying that we can find some way to to do that. Um, But my my goal is, like I said, to to travel to these different places and participate in these races because that's what I love to do. When you know, when you go to these races, uh, you meet different people, you know, and for different walks of life. And, and, and part of that, part of it is that for me. Also, part of it is the competitor in me. Uh, uh, because you know when you're out there, it's you against yourself. Um, and that's the part of it that I love and and, and I miss. Uh, when, when I first did the Beast of Beacon, my first race back, I was so emotional when I crossed that line because I, I forgot how much I loved that feeling. Tell me, Tyrone, what are some of the messages that you want to leave with our listeners i want to tell anybody out there that if you're suffering you know if if you have something debilitating happening to you um that you can turn it around you know i i realized when i was laying on the ground that day that um and and i knew i was going to live that life is is too short to you know sit on the sidelines and if there's something that you want to do you can do it you know, mm-hmm. obviously through yourself, but also through help of family and friends. You can do anything you want. Mm-hmm. And, and and when you do it, it's a powerful feeling. It's the most powerful feeling you can have. Mm-hmm. So Thank you so much, Tyrone. I really appreciate you spending the time with me today. Is there anything else you want to share with the audience? Well, Barbara, it's, it's great seeing you again. Uh, I'm so happy that we met on that plane. And like I said, I, I miss your mom, too. Mm-hmm. She was a wonderful woman. Uh, I have so many great memories, uh, especially on trivia days when she shout out the answer. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but she would she shout did. it out. And, and even though you said, don't do that. Yes, oh, yes. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. That's such a great memory. I really appreciate your, your saying that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's going to be making me laugh and smile for the rest of the day. And I really thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Tyrone, thank you again. I am so happy for you. I am so happy that you have this new goal and I I know that you will achieve it. There's no doubt in my mind, none. So best of luck to you. And again, everyone, there will be links to all of this in the show notes. Please go and check it out. Learn a little bit more about Tyrone Fulgham. You will be so impressed. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you soon.